Neil Gaiman once said that Terry Pratchett was a very angry man and reading this book Nightwoods by Terry Pratchett I can understand that uh, I think it's his angriest book ever Some months ago, I had a video about the um, Watts uh, adaptation by BBC, which uh, seems to be a very wrong move, I guess. And I said that, yes, I'll read Night Watts. I've got this on my bookshelf for quite some time. It's unread. So I'll go and read it and see who this cursed guy is. Yes, I know. I've been spoiled. I know what's the big surprise in the book. I've been spoiled about it. I know what's about, uh, so yes, I have to read it. And um, as I was looking at the book, I've noticed that not only I've read it, but I had a five-star review about it on Book Reads, and it was uh, ten years ago or something. It was back in 2011, and I have forgotten. I've read this book, and I was, what the hell? Why have I forgotten this? It was a great book. I loved it, and reading it for during you know the staying at home era we're not quite staying at home at this moment that's why i've got a haircut i was uh, perplexed for not remembering it and midway through i kind of got it why have i forgotten i've read this book over here night was by dear Pratt said yes i know this is booktube and in booktube you seriously have to have this any book you're reading awkwardly to your side here or here or whatever like that see that's the book that's the book here in the camera that's the Nightwoods novel by Terry Pratchett the cover is first covered by Paul Kidby who replaced the Josh Kirby in this book and it's uh, his own riff out for Brand's Nightwoods painting with characters from the book here say it like that and the focus is off <laughs> so yes what's the whole plot of the book we have Vimes who is about to become a father and he remembers that the revolution that he was part of as a young woodsman and how he met his mentor is about to come and he hunts down Carcer who is a notorious killer he's ruthless he hunts him on the roof of the university and then magic happens and he's transported to the past days before the big revolution happens and it's not the revolution that puts veterinary in power and he also finds out soon that uh, the person who was his mentor the sergeant at arms who taught him who he, who he was is murdered by carcer who is also back in the past so he has to assume his role and make uh, sure that history plays the right way so he will exist in the future because it's very probable that if things change in the past and remember we have a psychotic killer like Carcer in the past uh, running amok, there will be no future he will be deleted from existence he himself, uh, the Watts and his uh, child-to-be so the stakes are high and uh, Discord novels as a general rule have two layers there is a very straight adventure plot in those books and here we have the adventure plot we have Vimes thrown back in the past and he has to save the future the stakes are always high that's something Pratchett does amazingly well he doesn't play the plots just for laughs he has very solid plots on the back end of the book and then he has a lot of zany humor on top because the characters are the characters of Terry Pratchett and they're all zany they've got their own idiosyncrasies and their own quirks and the way they see the world and it's not normal and this exaggeration of their abnormality makes the book so funny and here's the problem sometimes on his own he's too much of a straight guy yes he's idiosyncratic because he's super efficient he sees the world the way it is and he's very efficient knows what to do uh, he's a bit like uh, Grand Weatherworks, that's why I love those two characters, they're very efficient. However, Granny is headstrong. Uh, Vimes is not. He's not generating laughs on his own. 
He relies a lot on the colorful cast around him that provide the humor. And here he's on his own. Yes, we see Colin, we see Nobby, who is Nobby, but they're too much in the background. They're not as important as in the other Watch books, as well as, you know, the other characters, Carrot and uh, uh, Angua and Ciri and all the rest, and Detritus. They're a great source of humor, and here they're not. They're uh, in the background. They appear in the beginning, in the end. But the main chunk of the book, the past, is not there. And we see a lot of those characters, their origins. We see how Dibbler became Dibbler. And we see a very young Patrician. That's great. However, you have to know these characters from other books to get the references and the humor of them. And that's a bit of a problem. I mean, I haven't read Thief of Time yet, so I was not sure about what was the deal with the monks. I got the gist of it, but I probably lost a lot of inside jokes there. What can I say about this world fun? I have read all of them. It happens. So yes, there is less humor in this book, and that's a bit of a letdown, and that's it. Uh, that's uh, why I was, I was sort of forgetting this book. There was not a big... Uh, actually, there was a big, um, big money shot. When uh, the revolution breaks out and Vimes has to save lives. Something else I've noticed, and I stated in the beginning of the video, is that Nightwatch is Terry Pratchett's angriest book. Because here he's talking about revolution and how it lets down everybody. He's not quite climbing on his soapbox to preach about his ideas, but he's almost there. And you can see what, what he's angry about. He's angry about uh, the way power dehumanizes its subjects, the way of corrupt politicians and how they're figureheads and expendable and you switch one um, inadequate politician for another. They're greedy leaders and they attract fanatics who use uh, the excuse of power as a way to commit atrocities. And uh, there was this great line in um, Small Gods when he said that uh, there is nothing a uh, deranged psychopath would do, that uh, a normal person who just does their job will do. I'm paraphrasing here. And here with the uh, whole uh, secret police and their actions and their acts of um, evil, he gets back to this headspace again and further shows uh, what is happening. And he's very angry about the stupidity of people and the conformity. And you know what? His heroes like Granny or some Vimes, uh, they're free thinkers. They see the world the way it is and so do the magician. Magic in this world is seeing the world as it is, not how your preconceived notions of what's normal hides from you, and that's interesting. And Carcer is a fantastic uh, concept, he is the perfect foil, the perfect antithesis to some Vimes, because he's evil. Not only he's evil, but he never takes accountability for what he's doing. So while we have some Vimes who knows that he has to let people die, for history takes its course, and he feels very guilty about it and he has a real internal struggle about how to save lives and also make the past and have lives lost because that's history. History grows on the bodies of the dead. That's a sad reality and I'm not sure that's a line from this book but it could be. So they work together perfectly. And I think that Carcer is underused in this book because he appears at certain points, he adds some complications to what Sam Vimes is trying to do, but I felt that he was not used exceptionally well. And I would love to see, since the book takes a lot of inspiration from the French Revolution, as well as the Miserables, I would love to see a Carcer origin story in the past where he's sort of Jean de Jean, who does a lot of atrocities just to steal some food because he's hungry and that leads him to his path of becoming carcer or something. But it was not here. I had this idea that maybe there was some part like that in this book, but it may be some other uh, Terry Pratchett book that this happens or just some somewhere else I saw this or just coming out of my head. 
<laughs> really, I'm not sure uh, if you know what I mean. If there is a Zondazan type character who becomes a mass murderer because he has to get some food, and there is some allusions to it in the book. It appears that you know he is a misguided Zondazan backstory that he stole food because he was hungry, but not so. Never mind that. If there is. Um, something the way I have said and you remember what it is, leave a comment what it is, I love to hear this. And of course the book was uh, great in its own way, I love the certain points, I felt the feels at certain other points, it was interesting, it was a good deconstruction and satire of revolutions of politics, but at the same time I felt that it could be much more than that and that it needed some more um, oomph to stand out, so it's not a good start for Discworld. If you haven't read other Discworld novels, you'll definitely be lost in the references of the past of these characters and all the stuff. Uh, but it's a fun book to read. It's Pratchett at his best, uh, where he is uh, going into a groove and getting the books out at a very fast pace. Has lots of ideas. He builds upon what he has done before. And if you love the quotes, you read this. Either way, so if you've read this book, Night Woods by Terry Pratt, leave a comment below if you like it or not. Tell me what's your favorite Discworld novels, since it's my second Discworld review for the channel. I've done a review about uh, Hogfather, and I'll see you soon with another video. Thank you for watching.